I'm packing my suitcase when Tom shouts upstairs. Have you seen my car keys? Cut pocket, I shouts back as I'm trying to cram another jumper into my suitcase. Yeah, apparently the weather forecast says it's not great for the week ahead. Found him, he says as he leaves the house. Moments later, the front door goes again and Tom runs upstairs. Oh, sorry, almost forgot Tanya love, he says, kissing me on the cheek. In case you're asleep when I get home, I hope you have a lovely time in Dorset. And he's off again. It's Devon, I shout after him. Oh, and I've, um, I've left the number of the hostel in case there's no mobile reception. But he's gone. And that is a typical Sunday evening in our house. I thought Sundays were supposed to be a day of rest. I mean, everyone's always rushing about. There's Tom dashing off to meet his friends for the pub quiz. And, the, and then there's the twins arguing over the bathroom and what time the bus comes. Typical 14 year olds, I suppose. Hey, hey, don't be late home, I say. <coughs> but it's school holidays, said Adam, brushing his teeth. I don't care, I want you home as soon as the film's finished, I tell them. <laughs> oh, I love my family to bits, but I definitely need this week away. Hey, not that it's, it's going to be a relaxing one, mind you. Um, I'm a volunteer for an organisation for children with um, complex needs. Every year, will we take a group of children on an activity week? I've been doing it for 10 years now. My husband said it's like a busman's holiday. That's because my regular job is as a nurse in a special needs school. The kids love the activity week. Well, as do the volunteers. I mean, it's a week in the wilds of Dartmoor. Given my experience within the organisation, I have the responsibility to instruct new volunteers on care skills and, and hygiene. Well, other volunteers have, have other tasks, you know, such as safeguarding. I finally close my suitcase as the twins bound past me. Bye, Mum, they say as they run for the bus. <laughs> Oof, slamming the front door. <sighs> and then there's silence. Time for a cup of tea, I think. Oh, and then an early night. It's a six o'clock start in the morning. <gasps> it's the morning after the first night in the hostel and Ray, um, who's the supervisor in charge this week, has convened a team meeting. Oh, he looks tired. Brian whispers to me. He's been awake most of the night. Alfie woke up crying. He's been upset and unsettled all night. I never heard a thing. I must have been in a deep sleep. It's all this fresh air, I presume. I mean, we were slightly concerned in the planning stages that Alfie might struggle a bit being away from home. But we were well prepared. I mean, we put care plans in place, information gathering and the like. And his parents were happy for him to, to come on the activity week. I mean, we were aware that they were going through a divorce. Alfie had been struggling. <laughs> they thought it might do him good, you know, having a break. In my opinion, I think Alfie will be okay if we give him some extra support throughout the night, says Ray. My suggestion is that volunteers take it in turns on night duty and they check on Alfie throughout the night, in pairs of course. Oh, I mean, it sounds like a sensible solution. I mean, there's plenty of volunteers to share the workload. <laughs> Uh, if everyone's okay with that, then I'll draw up a rota. Uh, Tanya and Brian, you're up first. Uh, it's 11.30 at night. Two hours left on night duty. I'm sat in the common room, drinking a cup of coffee, trying to keep awake. Brian, I say. I repeat it a bit louder. 
He's fallen asleep in the chair, snoring softly. I try again. Brian! But it's no use. He's in a deep sleep. It's time to check on Alfie. I'm not happy about going on my own. But, well, the last three times that Brian and I went, he was fast asleep. I head off to Alfie's room. As I approach, I can hear sobbing. Alfie is clearly awake and upset. I open the door to his room, step inside, and the door shuts behind me. Instinctively, I go to comfort Alfie. It's okay, Alfie, I say. I'm sure it's it's just a bad dream. He's wailing and thrashing about on bed. I sit down on the bed beside him and he clings on to me. He's got a strong grip for a 12-year-old. He slowly starts to calm down. I know it's against the rules to be on my own with a child, but what am I supposed to do? Ignore him? I think about shouting for Brian, but I'm sure he won't hear me and I'll just wake everyone else up. I slowly try to release myself from Alfie's grip, but then his sobbing increases. It's okay, Alfie, I say. I reach for my mobile phone with one hand and I dial Brian's number. I put it on speakerphone. It goes straight to answer machine. I'm there for about an hour until I feel that Alfie's grip has loosened. He stopped crying. He's asleep. I gently lower him back into bed. I quietly get up and I go to leave the room. I go to open the door and Brian comes in. His eyes are red from sleep. He's clearly angry. I put my finger to my lips and usher him out the door. What do you think you're doing? He says. You know you're not supposed to be alone with a child. You were asleep, I hissed back at him. You put me in an impossible situation. What was I supposed to do? He looks momentarily embarrassed. Well, why didn't you try and wake me? Well, I did try, obviously, I say, as we get back to the common room. Tarek and Barbara have arrived for their night shift. Well, I, I, I quickly fill them in on what has happened and then I retreat to my room. Night, Brian, I say curtly. But he doesn't answer me. He just goes to his room. I arrive in the common room for breakfast. It's seven o'clock. Instinctively, I'm aware that something's wrong. Um, some of the volunteers are there and they stop talking when I arrive. Ray looks stressed. He, um, he comes up to me. Uh, Tanya, I need to have a word with you. He takes me to the games room, which is empty, and sits me down. Tanya, Alfie Thomas has made a serious allegation about you. He says that an incident happened last night. I, I feel my legs turn to jelly. What? I, I don't understand. I, I quickly tell Ray how Brian had fallen asleep and, and that Alfie was distressed. I've, I've spoken to Brian. He says that you instructed him to stay in the common room while you conducted the patrol on your own. He says that it was something that he was uncomfortable with. 
But he's lying, I say. He's trying to cover himself. Ray cuts me off. Tanya, I can't take sides. We'll get to the bottom of this. But in the meantime, I think it's best if you return home. It's several weeks since that night. I haven't heard from anyone regarding what Alfie alleged. Tom's tried to reassure me. I'm sure it'll blow over, he says. I'm not so sure. How could I have been so stupid? I'm at school at work one day when the head teacher calls me into his office. He looks serious. Tanya, this is very difficult for me. I've received a letter from social services naming you in an investigation of an allegation of abuse. I can't believe this is happening. I can, I can feel tears welling up in my eyes. The head teacher continues. We don't know the exact nature of the allegation but until further notice, I, I have no option other than to suspend you from work. I get home. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. What am I going to tell Tom and the boys? Suddenly I see a letter on the doormat. I see on the envelope that it's got the logo for the charity on it. I quickly rip it open. Dear Mrs Tanya Brooks, it says, I am writing to inform you of an investigation into an allegation of assault which happened in July of this year. Apparently, I'm being suspended from the charity. The police and social services are involved. I can't believe this is happening. I just feel, I just feel so powerless. If this don't get sorted, then I'll lose my job. Face charges. I could, I could even go to prison. I haven't done anything wrong. Apart from allow myself to be alone with that kid. <laughs>